Hi, I'm Tony. This is SV Tapatia. We're building a sailboat, um, a 32 foot, basically speaking, 32 foot sailboat um, that's designed to be capable, capable enough to, to cross oceans perhaps. And uh, yeah, this is the video log of the build of this boat. And we're going to start off this week with a uh, you know, a very sort of minor job in a way, but, but one of those things, and there are a few things on a boat uh, that take quite a long time to do, even though they're very small. And, uh, you might remember last week we fitted this, this bronze cleat in the background here, and, and you may have got a, an idea from that how much work is involved in, in fitting just a very simple bit of deck hardware. Um, yeah, it's sat there now, I'm very pleased with it, but um, you know, a lot of effort goes into something as simple as that. Um, as I say, we're starting this week with something comparable in many ways. A small thing that, that took an awful long time. Let's have a look. Yeah, it all centered around here. Um, you know, in the galley, the two sinks we've got here, I've got these hand pumps mounted. You may have seen me you know, cleaning up the pump unit themselves quite a while back. Um, and they're old English pub beer pumps that I'm using for pumping water, one for fresh, one for salt. Um, I'm rather fond of the idea because obviously you need no electricity. Um, and you can meter how much water you use, gives you good control of how much water you're using. But the issue I had, I've had these pumps for a, you know, a long, long time, but even when I got them, obviously they were second hand, they're, they're, they're dated back from the, I don't know, 1940s or so, possibly older than that. But even when I got them, there was a thread on the top of there and uh, molded into this plastic, whatever that is, Bakelite or some sort of fairly early form of hard plastic. And the thread was broken and it had been glued together. And I, in fact, glued it together once as well, uh, but it hadn't survived the years well. And for a long time, I've been sort of thinking about how to get over that issue because the top section, which is this, this top section here, screws onto that thread. And, and completes the handle. So I wanted to do something about it. And, and now I've got the little Chinese lathe. I thought I could make up a part that would do the job. Um, now we're gonna get into the making of that very soon, but, but first of all, I'll tell you that there's a whole section of this that I've left out. First of all, this thread in this top section, threads in there, um, is a one inch, eight threads per inch uh, thread. So UNC and I believe one inch Whitworth is, a, is the same size. Um, anyhow, one inch UNC thread. And bolts or threaded rod, well a threaded rod would be far too long, but bolts of that diameter aren't easy to get, of that thread aren't easy to get here in Germany. But I did manage to find one bolt, but it was steel. And I started off making a piece out of that and uh, I nearly finished it actually. And then I thought, no, I don't like this. I just don't want it to be steel. It will probably rust, even if I seal it, paint it, whatever. It's probably gonna rust. So I went back to the step one, back to the drawing board, bought a bit of brass and uh, started from there.
Well, here's the piece of brass, beautiful piece of brass, um, inch diameter, or 25 mil actually, fractionally under an inch, but basically an inch diameter. And obviously I had to cut a thread on it. Now, the reason why it started with a steel bolt is that I didn't have a thread cutter, I didn't have a um, one inch UNC thread cutter. So, when I moved over to brass, obviously I had to buy a, a die, and I picked this one up here. I'm gonna hold that up to the camera. Beautiful die, uh, one inch, eight threads per inch. Lovely. And that's all very well, but when it arrived, it became clear that I didn't have a die holder big enough for it. Now I've got, I've got a whole selection. I've got, this is just one of many I've got. This is the biggest one though. And as you can tell, there's no, no way that's going in there. I also had, and I thought this would probably do the job, a piece here that I made up for threading on, on a lathe. I made this years ago at Brighton Tech. Um, but also, it's got holes two different sizes of die, but nowhere near big enough. What to do? Well, clearly, here's the thing, guys. You know, last night, last night I was watching Leo, Tally Ho, um, as I often do late at night, and he's got that beautiful thread cutting machine, hasn't he? And, and you know, when you watch these boat builders, and I'm not knocking anyone here, but when you watch these, these builders, Leo or, or Doug at Seeker, you know, they've got tools for every piece of equipment you could possibly imagine. And that's not the way it is for some of us, is it? Let's face it. Um, so you have to get a bit inventive. I could have gone out and paid money, bought a bigger die holder that I'll probably only ever use once, could have done. But you've seen me before, I think when I had to cut a very small thread, I didn't have a small enough die holder and I held the die in, in a pair of mole grips. And so I tried to start to look around, see what I could do. I tried mole grips, I tried a few different things and I eventually settled on a pair of Steelsons and worked out that I could hold this thing in a set of Steelsons as long as, and this is a die, it hasn't got a split in it, this die, it's, it's just got this notch down there Plus the, plus the divots for the three screws and a notch there, but not a split all the way through like I'd like a die to have actually. But I worked out, I've got a bit of trial and error, if I held it in a pair of Steelsons with a nail down in that slot, it would grip enough and I could cut the thread.
And there we have, I hope you can see that, there we have the finished article with the nut that threads onto the bronze central rod and uh, the one inch, eight threads per inch on the brass there and that. Also, a step on the end that locates down inside of there. So that locates that, holds it all nice and firmly in place. See our top threads beautifully onto that. And there we have it. Lovely. nice. Companionway steps, got that done. You might remember last week I had I made a batten up, it was in the workshop and I just screwed that in position there. Fitted this catch to the board and you see back end of that board slides under that batten. And the board just sits down there like that and it's just well and truly held in position. So might well need to touch up the varnish a little bit here but happy.
and as you can probably tell getting a bit of paint on the cockpit well there it's three coats of epoxy sealer primer on there now another three to go and a bit of top coat coming on looking good and that's it for this week thanks for watching curious you know that youtube stuff subscribe button all of those lovely things the bell next to it um we'll be back next time uh pushing on and uh i say thank you for watching bye